So for the third day of our class, we're going to focus on one of the biggest social networks out there. Uh, by some counts, YouTube is the second largest social network in the world. It um, has lots of traffic, lots of users, lots of hits and clicks and views. Um, YouTube, it's on par uh, with uh, Facebook. And you might not think of it perhaps as a social network, but it has all of the same trappings of the other networks. You're able to like stuff, you're able to comment, you're able to share, you're able to get followers, just like every other social network that we talked about. And just like every other social network that we talked about for business, uh, we can... actually it's coming, it's coming this way. Uh, just like every other social network we talked about uh, for your business, it could be a way to get you more followers, more traffic, uh, more hits to your website, more sales, whatever you're trying to do. But the big barrier to entry to YouTube is you need to come with a video. You know, if you set up Facebook, uh, if you set up Instagram, Twitter, and all of that, you can kind of learn as you go. You can share stuff on those networks, text content, links, etc. But on YouTube, you have to share video. So that's what we're going to spend today talking about creating video. Uh, let's uh, go ahead on your computer, double-click the computer icon on the top left corner. I've got some files for you. Double-click computer at the top left. And then open up Classroom Data Drive Z, as in Zebra. Classroom Data Z. And then scroll down to find our class, which is Campus uh, social 2, Let me open campus social 2, and if you're new this week the syllabus is right there, you want to get a copy of that at some point, my email is there, but for us today you're going to need two things, you're going to need the PDF called social media YouTube ideas and the folder called YouTube clip, grab both of those, drag them to your desktop or your flash drive but just drag from my folder to your desktop, copy that, those two files, the, uh, media, the YouTube ideas and the YouTube clip folder. So copy those over. Let's take a moment to do that. If you're having any trouble, let me know. Where did the, where did the pink signage sheet end up? It's coming. Back just for coming back to the store. Okay. Did everyone get those files? Is anyone need Get those, uh, those items. <coughs> All right, so let's talk about what I just gave you in that folder. I've got uh, a couple of items. One is a sound clip. If you have headphones, uh, you can plug them in and hear this. If not, that's okay, because I'll be playing the video and you can hear it. But I've got a... it's known as a music bed. That's just a fancy term of saying music that is going to lie below your video. A music bed. So this is going to be music that's going to play throughout the video. I got this sound clip from YouTube. YouTube gives you like 2,000 sounds for free, 2,000 full-length 
music files for free. We'll see where a little later. But uh, this is one of the big detriments for people to make YouTube videos. YouTube is really smart about finding copyrighted material. And if your video has copyrighted material, visuals or audio, the video might get flagged, worst case, uh, best case scenario, you'll get a notification. Worst case scenario, they'll take it down. And in between, they might not make it available in some countries, and yes, available in others. It's weird. But YouTube really cares about uh, copyrighted material. So we're going to talk about don't just get that music out of your music library. Don't rip a CD and take that song. There's whole things we need to talk about regarding copyrights and music. The short answer is use music that is allowed to be used for non-commercial purposes, that's copyright free and such, and YouTube, we'll see later, gives us a screen full of hundreds, maybe thousands of songs in a variety of styles that could work really well for your, music, for your videos. So I already got one. We're going to use it in our video in a, in a little bit. I've got the, the raw video that I recorded. I'm doing like a, a product review video. And I've got mistakes in there, and I need to edit it, and I need to add text, and my logo, and all of that. So the raw video is movie clip. And then a version of the video that has been edited, that has been cut together with text and sound is right there. So you can see an example of a finished result. Um, so we're going to work with those in a moment because again you need some kind of video to take to YouTube. I'm going to close that for the moment and let's look at the PDF I gave you also. Uh, that document, social media YouTube ideas, because if I'm telling you you need to, you need to take your videos to YouTube then suddenly, well, I don't have videos. I don't know what to do. Uh, I've never done this before. These are going to be some ideas. Let's take a look at these. You'll be able to print this a little bit later, uh, as well as the syllabus, if you'd like. But uh, let's look at this document. If you get something about setup assistant, just, uh, I guess, cancel that. Just cancel any pop-ups. YouTube ideas. YouTube is the granddaddy of all video sharing sites. Founded in 2005 and featuring a video from the San Diego Zoo uh, as the very first YouTube video, YouTube has gone on to host countless videos and create many viral sensations. YouTube is great for social networking to tap into because more and more people are getting their info and entertainment from videos. So studies show that video is on the rise as a way of, to communicate on social media, on just about everything. Uh, so if we have a foothold compared to our competitor and we've tried creating videos and our competitor hasn't, that could get us more followers, more hits, more traffic, more sales. It is a much larger endeavor to create videos, however. And YouTube is the big one to share video. It's not the only one. Facebook saw that YouTube is so big and powerful regarding video, so Facebook says, okay, now you can add video to Facebook. And by Facebook's own measurements, it's doing very well. So that's another place for you to share video. There's Facebook. You can share video on Twitter, too. Um, there's other ones, uh, Vimeo and Dailymotion, etc. But YouTube is the big one, so that's the one we're going to focus on. And it's uh, a little bit more than a decade old now. So here I've got types of videos. While the following are by no means the only types of YouTube videos that exist, they should give you a good idea of the breadth of styles and subject matter. Watch the videos and try to figure out how you could possibly create one in that style for your own company. It's important to create content on a regular basis. You never know which of your videos will become the next viral hit. So we're going to take a quick look at some examples of YouTube videos. Break, that, break them down conceptually. These are not the only kinds of videos that could be created. But I listed these because I believe these are often some of the best ideas to have when you want your company to get on YouTube. Well, what kind of videos am I going to share on YouTube? Here's six possible examples. It's not all inclusive, of course. Um, you know, I don't mention other kinds of videos because they might not relate particularly to your company and such. Let's look at, the, look at this first one here called the unboxing type of video. It is literally what it might sound like to you. So I'm going to play this. You don't have to play these if, 
you don't want. I'll play it because I've got sound on my setup here. Confirm my sound is working. this you need a website why not do it your well after the ad um, ads are annoying but this is how you can make money off of YouTube uh, let's say you're uploading videos and such about your company you can also make a little money off of those videos that you're uploading uh, by putting ads on them and when people click the ads you get some money uh, we'll talk about that later it's called monetization I'm gonna skip this one Hey there guys, Zach here from Inbeta and welcome back to another video. Now today we're unboxing and taking a first look at the white Microsoft Lumia 650 from, well, Microsoft. This device is on sale. Let me jump forward a little bit. This is a review site uh, that reviews technology and one of the videos that they have here is known as an unboxing video. There's many other examples of this kind of video, but let me show one here just get started with the unboxing. So diving straight into the unboxing, this is the Lumia 650 box, pretty standard for a Lumia device, especially for a low-end Lumia device. We've got the device on the front of the... Yes, it is literally opening up a box. <laughs> <laughs> the unboxing style of videos is opening a box. It could be some sort of technology like this phone. So yes, he's going to go in and tell you what's on the box and he's going to open it up and tell you there's a power adapter in there and everything. So you might say, that is so boring, who would care? 107,000 people cared about this video. 107,000 views on this video. 791 thumbs up, 41 thumbs down. People really liked this video. And you can see that, you can see quickly the popularity or the effectiveness of a video by seeing those two stats. Every video has a view count, likes, unlikes, and comments also. This has got 135 comments. So yes, this kind of video is popular. You may think, well, this is worthless. Why would anyone want to watch me open a box? Again, it's going to depend on what is being shown. This phone came out recently. So this is like these guys here, WinBeta. This website, WinBeta, got the scoop. Here's this new phone. Let's check it out. Let's get you excited for it. Obviously, behind the scenes, about this and many kinds of videos is they're making money off of this. That commercial that was there at the beginning for Wix, if someone is browsing this video, sees Wix, and they say, I do need a website, and they click on Wix, WinBeta got money for that. That's the big secret with all of this. How do you make money online? It's going to be ads. Uh, depending on the video, you can put a, an ad in the middle of your video. You know, here's a word from our sponsor. And if you click on that, they get money. If you set yourself up when we get to that to add, to add commercials and such to your videos, you can be making money off of your video clips. How much? We'll talk about that later. But uh, this is one example of an unboxing, and it's kind of like a review also. But I've seen unboxings for a variety of things. Let's look up here. Unboxing, um, I don't know, Mattel. I'm just going to look something up. Cars, Toys 2. Let's see what this uh, result might be. Hey guys, welcome to another Disney Collector video. Today we have a new die cast from the Cars 2 collection. This is the number 18, Petrov Trunkov. Really nice die cast. Let's take a look in the back of the package. Here you can see other releases. So here's Petrov Trunkov. Really good. But Okay, so one and a half minutes of looking at this uh, toy car. Uh, 6,635 reviews. I mean, uh, uh, like uh, views, 6,637 views. Um, and so uh, this was released in 2012 um, by Fun Toys Collector. The, every video is... Uh, created by a channel on YouTube, that's the terminology, terminology channel 
on Twitter it's a profile or it might be a page or whatever but here on YouTube they call it a channel so we're gonna create a channel later and fun toys collector has seven million subscribers seven million followers every time there's a new video seven million people get an alert that says there's a brand new toy to look at and so if I take a quick look at the channel and look at videos, the latest video is Disney Frozen Kinetic Sand Shimmering Snow Olaf. Snow something. Three hours ago, uploaded. 600 views already. I'm just going on and on. 52,000 views for Blind Bags Collection, Lion Guard, Shopkins, Sophia, Miles Disney. 20, 20 hours ago. So, this particular channel is all about unboxing toys and it's got thousands of views. They're making money off of this. Now, let's see, think about it in terms, again, I'm showing these examples uh, to have you think about how can I do this for my own company. Let's say uh, I've got this fictional business, Victor's Bakery, and I ship throughout the US. It might be nice for me to record an unboxing video of the item that I send you. Maybe I've got a really nice custom-made box with a little ribbon on it that I ship to you and then I'm opening it up and I'm saying when you get our product it's gonna have a nice little thank you card in it and it's gonna have this and that and I'm kind of you know showing you what you're gonna get I'm showing you that the cupcake is gonna come intact it's not gonna get all smushed and all of that so I'm kind of advertising my own product to people on the opposite way what if I'm Victor's Bakery and I'm on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and I tell people on Facebook hey everyone create your own unboxing video if you ordered something from us and show it the best one will get a free cupcake you know something to entice people you make an unboxing video about my product free advertising it doesn't have to be professional it could be a person holding the their their video recorder on one hand and unboxing it with the other that's fine it's gonna be all shaky and weird but free advertising because what if that person that's doing that has 20 followers I just got free 20 extra people that could have seen my product uh, in addition to my own uh, viewers or followers. So there's plenty of these kinds of videos out there for everything. Unboxing air conditioner. Oops. Air conditioner. This is going to be three minutes long of unboxing an air conditioner. <laughs> Fast forward motion and all that, we'll be able to do that. Now we're seeing this variety of kinds of videos, and the things that we're seeing, we will be able to do most of the things that we're seeing on these videos with the software that we'll be seeing, that we'll be using. And it is totally free, Windows Movie Maker on Windows. If you're on the Mac, you're, we can use iMovie. <clears throat> So those two software to edit videos are totally free. Windows Movie Maker, iMovie. There's obviously much more professional ones out there. Premiere, After Effects, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to look at the free one, which is pretty powerful. It's not the most full-featured. Uh, to get the most uh, video editing power and all of that, you, you need to spend. And you can get Adobe Premiere Elements for about $79. That's a good one, although it gets much more complicated uh, the more you you know the higher you go up in the software um, we'll talk about the, that software in a, in a little bit uh, just a moment but look at how this video was made it's he had it on a tripod I don't know the kind of camera but it could be you know a real video camera it could be this thing that you've got in your in your wallet these record really good video nowadays if you've got a relatively modern one uh, so you could use this. He seemed to have put it on a tripod. Then he picked it up and looked at it a little bit. And then now 3,000 views later. Uh, 24 followers. You don't have to have hundreds or thousands of followers to get your video seen by a lot of people. That's the great thing about this. You don't have to have a critical mass of people to have a hit in a video. The thing is you do have to create video content that people would care about, that people would want to watch, like those toys or this. Maybe I want to I'm interested in buying this air conditioner, the VSD55WD1MDA, and then I look it up on YouTube. You know, 
how big is it? Is it bulky? Is it hard to open up or install? This is the point about what are you going to create on YouTube? You know, I can show you the tools, the software. I can show you examples, but what are you going to create? Again, it's up to you. Um, what makes sense for you to create on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, etc. Um, so the thing about video, because I've already, I'm going to give you a video clip to work with. The question always is, well, how do I make my video? What kind of camera do I need? Again, it's any recording device should work really well. You know, even like a, a web camera. I use this web camera to record my my audio. Um, let me make some notes here. Uh, most laptops nowadays come built in with web cameras. That could be a, a thing that you could use. The one I'm using, I like this Logitech C920, uh, C910, I believe, uh, which is slightly old. The new C1, the C920, is out there. I believe I paid around fifty dollars for it, like four years ago. So it's still around that cost. This webcam, this is portable. I can plug it into a laptop, desktop. I use it for the microphone. I like the microphone. The the video quality is also good. But on my videos that I record for the class, I don't I don't use the video of it. I just use the microphone. Your laptop probably has a microphone built in. But the problem with that is that if I'm standing too far from the microphone, it doesn't pick it up. It doesn't record very well. So actually, let me, let me back up here. The secret to a great video, you need good visuals and sound. Duh. A good video is visuals and sound. That's the definition of a video. Now, a good video needs good visuals and audio. These phones that you probably have probably shoot very good video, probably HD quality video. Um, the problem is that people then record handheld and they're shaking. You think I'm holding it steady, but the camera doesn't lie. You're you're shaking slightly, and it gets magnified on the on the lens. So, let's be more specific here. Good visuals mean steady shots. So my phone, I can stand it up on its side like that. It'll be rock solid right there. Uh, you know, I set it up somewhere, point it at something, it stands up, and then I can record. No shaking. Okay, I, my phone can't do that. It's curved. Well, I would need a tripod. You can buy various accessories that fit every phone um, to, uh, to, to clip onto the phone, attach it to your classic tripod, and then put it on the tripod, and then you've got steady video. They make, specific, they make tripods specifically for phones, too, that are nice and compact. They clip onto the phone, you put them on your desktop, you angle them different ways, you've got a steady shot. Um, Again, if you as these ideas that we talk about in rules, you can always you can always break them. There's plenty of great videos out there that are help that are handheld and get ten thousand views. It's going to still depend on your content. Uh, steady shots, um, you know, focused, clear, light. If I'm going to record the president of the company giving their weekly pep talk and they are standing where Savoy is standing here, I'm not going to stand over here and record them. I'm going to stand over here and record them. I'm going to get closer to fill the video with as much as him as possible because I'm going to have a lot of empty space all over the edges. I'm going to have a weird background. So I want to be focused on the person or the subject we saw on the toys. Those little toys, they were focused on the toy because the camera was closed or they zoomed in. A lot of light so you can see what you want to, what you want to look at. The big mistake is I've got a really great camera, even like you know a $500 camera, but I'm sh recording maybe in the corner right there, and uh, it's not going to look so good. Our eyes are like the most advanced camera ever. We haven't been able to match our eye yet because our eye is dynamic. If I look in this area where there's more light, my eye focuses instantly and it looks great. I look over here, my eye focused instantly, that looks great. The camera that we have invented isn't that advanced yet. 
and therefore I'm looking over here and I think it looks great but this camera is gonna have trouble it's a little darker in that corner compared to everything else so that's why I need a lot of light depending on the kind of video I'm creating of course but I need light so that I can capture it well in the camera and then for sound the same sort of thing uh, avoid noise so if it's a noisy environment this is gonna pick it up even even more. I Again, our ears are the best microphones out there. I can hear something, I can pick it up, you know, there's a crowd of people talking and I can hear one person because I chose to hear that one person. This is going to record everyone talking, it's going to be muted, it's going to be noisy, it's going to be bad audio. So you might have great visuals but bad audio and it's a bad video. You might have great audio, but bad visuals, so it's a bad video. You want to have good visuals and good audio. Get close. So again, if I'm going to record someone, I'm not going to do it from a distance, because these are great when you've got it up to your ear and you're talking to it. But when uh, I'm recording someone, I need to get closer. This microphone loses quality very quickly once you're far away from someone even that $500 camera that you buy uh, might not be the best if you're far from it, if you've got low light. So get close, fill the frame, make it quiet, you know, depending on your video. You may be recording a video at your restaurant, which of course is going to be noisy and there's nothing you can do about it, but that's part of the ambiance of the video. So it's better better to get the video in the moment than edit it later. If I can record what I'm trying to, rec to get across as I record it, that's better than trying to get that out of my editing software later because th that has a limitation. You can increase the brightness and the volume in the video software, which we will see, but if it's too low, and you try to increase it, it's, it's, you have nothing to work with. You can't increase volume to something that doesn't exist. And don't trust those Hollywood movies where they're in the police station and they say, enhance and zoom in. And then they take that little photo and they blow it up and they see the tattoo on his arm and they catch the bad guy. <laughs> that's, not, that's not realistic. You want to get close and you want to have good light and good audio. Let's look at some other kinds of videos. You get the idea with the unboxing video and hopefully an idea of how to use it for yourself. But any questions on the unboxing video? Screen capture tutorial. This particular one is great mostly for um, you know technology kinds of companies where I want to record my screen, my computer screen. I want to show someone how to do something on screen. That's what I'm doing every single time I'm here. I'm talking to you but I'm also recording my screen. And the question about that is, well, what software do you use? Let me tell you right here. Uh, my recommendation for screen capture software. Screen capture software. The one I like, the one I'm using right now, is called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS. OBS. It's free. It's open source, it's for Windows, it's for Mac, it's for Linux, it's for everything. It's what I'm using right here, so every time I come in I have this little thing that you might see. Um, it's powerful, so in a sense it could be complicated, but I've got it set up that it records everything I do on my monitor and my voice. You see as I speak the little green line is jumping there, it, it sees that, it, that I'm speaking, and I can get it pretty complex here because I can add multiple devices and such, like um, like here, if, if I wanted to, I could add my, my video right here, and what I could do is I could have myself in the corner right there. I don't do that because I'm going to block the corner, and I want you to see all sides of my screen. But now my video there has me right on screen for people to see. You can attach multiple cameras and microphones and, and all of that, so you can get this... What's the website? Open... It's over at obsproject.com. Obsproject.com. Again, it's Windows, it's Mac, it's very powerful, it's free. 
That's what I use to record my screen. And I'll show you examples then of a couple of screen capture videos. After the ad. And this is Victor Campos for PMD Interactive. Let's build an Android app in Visual Studio in five minutes. Well, first we need to go online and download Visual Studio 2015. It's the latest version from Microsoft, so just search it. All right, so this is just me. This is one that I made for my company where I'm showing you, you can make your own Android app with this software. So I'm going through those steps. I went to the website, I downloaded, I'm double clicking, I'm telling what I'm doing, I'm saying check this option, do this, do that, and I condense it down to five minutes. The original recording uh, took a while because I had to wait for download time, I had to wait for installation time, and then with the editor that we're going to look at a little bit later, I went in and I cut out my mistake, I cut out the empty spots, I fast forwarded parts, I added text, all of that, and then I put together then a five-minute long video that gets you up and running. We'll see that we can add annotations and such like that. I made a mistake. I had said, this is a 23 megabyte download. Actually, it was a 23 gigabyte download. I can't go back and edit the video, so I added a little text on it to correct my mistake. And this one uh, worked really well for us. Actually, this, was, this one's got uh, 31,000 views. Not all of our videos have that many views. This one was a hit. Uh, yours is a hit however you define it. If I get a hundred views out of my video and I've never used YouTube, that's a hit. Uh, if you get 31,000, that's a hit. 31,000 for some of the YouTube personalities is a failure because they get uh, 40, uh, they get you know a million views. Um, anyone remember that classic YouTube video Gangnam Style about the guy dancing and stuff? That got a billion views, literally. A billion people saw it over and over. And so However you define what's effective is effective. And we got 103 likes on it. So what's the point of this? Our company does websites. Our company does social media. Our company makes apps. Here's a free video for you to learn the basic tools of how to make an app. Obviously, you're not going to make the next, the next Facebook app in five minutes. This is obviously named in a way to entice you to view it, but to make your video, your own app, it's not going to take five minutes. This is getting the software and setting it up in five minutes. And 103 likes show that people have liked it, 31,000 views, comments, people are asking questions, thanks, this really helped me. And people asking, well, mine's having a problem, can you help me? And yes, so then we gave a little tech support answer here and there just to further get more, you know, views. And so, this is a kind of video that you can create, screen capture depending of course on your company do I have something I can show on screen let's say I am a web design company and I'm showing how to set up your Twitter I can record myself doing that I learned how to use Twitter and now I want to share that for people using OBS you can record your screen and your voice you can then still edit the video in Movie Maker which we'll see would you also use that if you were going to um, do a PowerPoint and have voice um, sort of. So the question is about using PowerPoint. Do, do you use Open Broadcaster for PowerPoint? Is that, is that what you're saying? Um, you can, from PowerPoint itself, export to video now, if you've got the later versions of PowerPoint. Uh, but you could, yes, Open Broadcaster could be used for recording anything off your screen. So you can make a PowerPoint, you can talk about it, and then record it from Open Broadcaster. Now, in my notes, I had said share, how did I say it? I said, um, it's important to create content on a regular basis. Didn't I say that? Haven't I said that over and over for all the networks? Tweet often, Facebook often, etc. Use YouTube often. Uh, you don't have to create 10 minute long videos, 5 minute long videos over and over. You can get by with 1 minute long videos, 30 second long videos if they are useful. What if I'm doing the the social media minute and I put my camera on a tripod and I talk to it for one minute about what I know about social media and I release that once a week once a month whatever I'm releasing content on a regular basis the point of that is by default whenever someone watches a YouTube video and it ends 
by default, it will then suggest more videos. So if I've got more videos to show, YouTube will, will suggest more of my videos for people to keep watching. It's going to jump over to some other person's video right there, unless I cancel it. So by default, it's going to show you more videos more and more on and on. So if you create more videos, your videos will be up next. More of your content will be visible. If you create more videos in the same sort of style and concept, yours will show up more. Another kind of video is a how-to. Some of these bleed together, like the how-to. The one that I just showed you was a how-to video, but uh, specifically recording my screen. Let me show you a completely different kind of how-to video, how to plant tomatoes. I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone, and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First, you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There are several different ways you can... I tried to show a variety of styles of videos, from uh, relatively amateur to relatively professional. And obviously, this one, I feel, is one of the best ones visually. Um, notice we've got different kinds of shots. This is a handheld shot close up. It's a little shaky. This is a little bit further back on a tripod. It's steady. There was a shot where it was really close to the dirt with a really cool focus effect. Um, we'll see other items here like a, like a static photo. You know, you can put in like right here. This is coming up here where you can have just, that's just a photo that has a little animation on it. We can do that in Movie Maker. So you can make videos out of still photos too, a slideshow, but these have text on it and music. Soil is the key to growing great tomatoes. It contains all the nutrients necessary. And voice, so I really like this one as an example, is like really what to strive for at the top because it's got a lot of different angles. Uh, it's got a, you know, an on-camera person that is comfortable on camera. It's got great light you know, close-ups and focus and a lot of good information and text on screen. All of that, we can do that with what I'm going to show you. It's up to you to shoot the video with good audio and video. It's up to you to write the text and create something interesting and meaningful. When I did this lecture a few days ago at Southwestern College, because I, I, I mentioned I teach here and at Southwestern College, we've had this, we had this lecture that I'm talking about today at Southwestern also, and one of the students down there, he made a video about how to change the lens on the Sony whatever camera. So he made like a minute long video on how to change the lens on this $5,000 camera. You would think that sounds boring, but he made it look really interesting. Different shots, close up, far away. If you just put the camera on a tripod and talk, it might be a hit, it might not, you don't know. But if you are also visually interesting, that helps you. Did she have someone shoot that for her, or did she do that on her own with the tripod? I don't know. Um, there's no behind the scenes info, but it seems like someone's holding it right there because the camera's a little yeah. shaky. And then when it's nice and steady, most likely it's on a tripod. Well, Evie Stone is a company, <coughs> so. She probably had a lot of yeah, she probably yeah, had directors different and producers. Right. Possibly, yeah. Kind of you know that it's a whole mass. It could be a whole production. a whole a whole production, sure, but one person could do this themselves too. It's gonna to be more cumbersome because I have to put the camera on a tripod and I'm gonna sit down and talk. Then I have to stop and move the camera to another angle and start again. I one person could do this completely. You know, even like the close up shots, I could be holding my camera here while I'm digging in the dirt right here. But it's better if you've got a crew. Now, obviously, either way, this can be done. I'm just showing you this is one of the, the highest levels of, of video production. Um, and they got 60,000 views on that, 99 likes. What's the point of this? They sell, they mentioned right here, you want great tomatoes, so buy this great plant food, and they sell it. So that's how they're using it. It's sort of like an advertisement. It's a how-to, but it's also an advertisement. Buy our organic tomato, you know, plant food so you can get amazing tomatoes too when you go plant your own tomato. So think about it in terms like that. Show off how to do something and maybe do your own product placement. And there's plenty of these others. How to do this, how to do that. 
a few months ago, I moved into a new place and I inherited a broken doorbell. So I think, how do you break a doorbell? So I had to, how to fix a doorbell. And this video right here taught me how to do that. Obviously, I didn't electrocute myself. I'm still here. Uh, and uh, this video after the ad is 2 minutes 32 seconds. Today we're going to take a look at, at a doorbell. Been having troubles with this. It's not ringing. No sound. So that's pretty easy to take care of. So let's step inside and take a look at the doorbell. Once we've found that on the wall, we're going to pull the cover off. So this is an instructional video, how-to video. This one is clearly uh, just handheld, doing everything that needs to be done. 91,000 views. Someone needs to know how to fix a broken doorbell. So again, what kinds of videos can you create that you think people will want to view? I have, I've been on YouTube for a while and I have my own personal YouTube channel where I just put like my own hobby stuff, but I also do this for clients and we have to think in terms about what kind of video can we create to really entice people to watch. Well, watching is not the, is not really, just watching is not the reason we create these videos. We don't want people just to watch them. We want video, we want people to click on the annotations like subscribe or buy. We want people to click on the description. We'll talk about, we can add text down here, description and links. Click right here to go buy a doorbell right now on Amazon. That's an affiliate link. You can make money off of that too. So there's lots of ways to monetize your videos. Um, it's just up to you to create an idea and, and publish it. A review video. Let's check out this one. Hey guys, Brian Tong here from CNET.com and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole... Okay, this one is also another that's very professional. This company, CNET, they've been around 20 years or more on uh, in web technology and they're reviewing Google Glass. He's a professional on... Whole tech world buzzing. We want to really break... He's a professional. He's comfortable being on camera. This is another thing about, okay, I'm going to record the company president, but he's so stiff and terrible and, he, and he's like staring at the camera so weird. That's not going to work. So you have to get someone that is comfortable being on camera if they're going to be on camera. Now, he's been doing it for years, Brian, so he knows how to, uh, how to handle this. But let me show you. Look at that right there. Straight on shot and then side shot. This is a way to get someone who is not comfortable on camera to be comfortable on camera. This trick here is instead of me pointing my camera directly to Duane over here, I'm going to uh, get off to the side and talk to him. So instead of me pointing directly the camera like that, I'm going to put the camera to the side and I'm going to talk to him face to face, person to person, and the camera is going to point to him and record that. And that's going to be more natural because people to people will work better than machine to person. When they go from a front view to a side view, is that like a cut? Is that where they yeah. place it in? Exactly. And we'll be seeing how, how we can do that ourselves. It's actually easier than you think. You just need to have, this is two different cameras. One camera recording straight on and another recording off to the side. And then you just put the two clips together. It could be done with one camera where we record a little bit at this time, stop everything, move the camera to the side and record again and then we have to join the clips. So we'll take a quick look at this one. Floor program, and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap. But what this is really for is for developers, uh, you know, people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass. And what you see here is this is a frame here. It's not actually a pair of glasses. It's a thin titanium and sturdy frame. And what it does is it has this piece of glass right here. This is where an image is projected or kind of the heads up display for what you have here. So this is a review of this technology. It's obviously very professional. It's got text, it's got different angles. There was a shot, you know, inside of the device and, and everything like that. So this, this is a complex one. What you have here. So let me show you how these work. I'm gonna put these glasses on in. <laughs> Kev, I'll make these look good. Check it out, all right? But the first thing you have to do is, first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on. And I'm gonna start by saying, okay, glass. Okay, let's give this a shot. Okay, glass. I have a variety of options and here I'm gonna say record a video. And you'll see my screen change and now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey boys, say what's up, wave hi. There you go. Okay, so yes, definitely has a crew, two cameras, 
shot live at once. Like I said, it's better to get it at the moment that you record it than try to edit it later. And here he's got two. It's a little dark, but uh, they've got like high-end Canon cameras. You could uh, go with you know the consumer level ones, which are about three hundred dollars. Um, these uh, these kinds of cameras, these DSLR cameras, are are very powerful even at the lower end of three hundred, four hundred dollars and such, and they can easily go up to two thousand dollars and more. Uh, but they've also got. Uh, it might be hard to see here. They've got a little platform. They've got a stabilization rig. That's an extra, you know, five hundred dollar thing that you put on your shoulder and then you hold on to it. Remember the old, big, bulky cameras that you would put on your shoulder? Those, to some degree, were better than the modern ones where you hold with one hand because this hand here is not steady when you're holding that tiny, you know, twelve ounce camera. When you had that twenty pound camera on your shoulder with you stabilizing it, that video there was much more stable than this little one that's all bobbing around like that. So that's what they've got here. These kinds of cameras you can shoot with them like you know like a camera but they've got that stabilization rig to make it stable there you go right now you can also do a lot of other things with this Just you can um, use them for map direct this is 1 minute 43 seconds a quick look at it it's just splicing together a lot of type of video connection so that means you're going to have to have a phone tethered to this over bluetooth or even over wi-fi so my first impressions of glass i mean these things are amazing this is really the future and we've never seen anything like this but wearing them is is a little socially awkward yo jay what's up bro you're gonna kick it later tonight man <laughs> <laughs> But really, this is the future, and you know it can only get now. Obviously, this has been I'm Brian. Now, obviously, this has been recorded uh, with professionals and all of that. But you, you can do some version of it. Do you notice as the video is playing, these sort of annotations pop up? This pop up here suggested. Here's another video. Watch this video next. We are able to do that to have one video and then guide people to watch another one of our videos. We'll do that next time. At the top, it's covered at the moment behind the text there. There's another one that says, check out more clips from Hooked Up. So a link, we can embed links into our videos to have them go to other videos, to other websites to buy now. You know, show off the review, review your own product. Victor's Bakery, here's our review of the triple layer decadent black forest cupcake. And then we're talking about it, it's so tasty, you want to buy, a little pop-up happens in the corner, click to buy now. And it goes to my website where they can buy. Those are annotations. The newest generation of YouTube annotations are these that pop up on the side here, more info, where it pops up in a nicer looking sort of panel here. Because a lot of us now are kind of getting numb to these annotations that pop up. We just ignore them. It's another text that appears. It's in my way. I don't, I don't even look at it. But this new generation, they're called cards. We'll see when we get to this next time when we create the channel. Cards are the new generation where this pops into view with a great little picture and links and such. That could also be very useful for us to guide people to look at more of our videos or buy our products and such. So a review kind of video and you can go on reviewing the iPhone, reviewing the twin baby bath time Nemo toys, etc. Google Glass for kids. This one's 18 minutes long. So the length of your videos can be any length. The thing is that you don't know what is effective for your audience until you do it. This one right here, uh, another review about the same item. Uh, Marquez Brown Lee is a big name on YouTube and it shows 4 million views on that. Uh, but uh, the length of your videos in a sense it doesn't matter. You'll know how long to make your videos as you make videos. You could try making five minute long videos and YouTube when we get to that portion will tell us statistics. People really paid attention for the first four minutes of your five minute videos or they paid attention to the first minute and a half. So you will see your target audience's attention span as you put out videos so that you can then further create more effective videos that um, you know this 14 minute long video people might watch a couple minutes and then jump over 10 minutes in and watch a little bit more and jump over a few more minutes that might be showing that it's too long 
lists. This is just a listing things. Top five list, top ten list, whatever. This is top five New York style pizza restaurants in Charleston. This animation that is happening here, that unfortunately is not something we will be able to make in, in Movie Maker or iMovie that easily. This custom logo here, that's usually something more like Adobe After Effects, which is expensive. Uh, Adobe Flash, which is expensive. So we will be able to create other kinds of animations and transitions and such, such as this text right here. We can do that. We can't make the spinning globe very easily. We can't do all of that. Our logo rotating, it's a little more complex. Perspective. And what better subject to start with than the top five New York style pizza places in the Greater Charleston area? So this one gives me the sense of much more professional because, you know, you, he's got the microphone. He's a professional. You can buy that microphone, microphone for $40 at Fry's. Then you're a professional. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of that is that audio. He needed good audio. Maybe the camera had to stand back far enough to record him and the background. So he's got a microphone. You can get that kind of microphone. I think we saw one also on the, on the How to Plant a Tomato. I think she had a clip-on microphone on her lapel. You can get that for $40 at Fry's. A little clip-on microphone where you've got the microphone right here and have the person stand back far, and therefore we can mix the two audios together in Movie Maker, in iMovie. So again, good audio, good video. Makes a good YouTube video. As well as an excellent slice of pizza. We're at Vincent's Pizzeria in Mount Pleasant, number five on the list. In general, you kind of get the sense that it's a professional video. But then if you do watch it and break it down, there's a lot uh, that's not so good about the video. Like right here, it's kind of noisy. Um, he's not speaking loud enough. And a perfectly shaped slice, nice size, and it tastes wonderful as well. A lot of ambient audio that is getting in the way. So, you know, even pros might make mistakes and such, but uh, it's up to you to, to try this. He did say this was the first edition of this series of reviews, and this reviews is a, is a list of top five restaurants, top five Italian restaurants. So again, you can do top five, top ten, whatever. I could do top five, um, top five WordPress plugins. I could do a list type of video, and that is mixed with a review type of video that is mixed with a screen capture video. So you can mix these kinds of concepts together. 2,000 views, 15 subscribers. So it's not correlated that 15 subscribers will give me 15 views. 15 subscribers give me, give me 2,000 views. Because this is yet another uh, video about pizza, and therefore up next, Pizza Tour of New York City. Up next, Best of New York, Pizza top 10 favorite restaurants in Charleston. So all of these are linked together for, by YouTube and uh, it's helpful for me because my video could be up next for someone else in a style that I've created. Now of course be careful because everyone's got an opinion about top top five pizza and so here five thumbs up, four thumbs down. Uh, but any amount of views and traffic and comments is good, just like any social media. Yes? The rankings for the, the panel on the site, are those by uh, likes? There's a, some proprietary algorithm, some ranking system that YouTube has that they don't fully disclose for that, but it all helps. Because notice the next one that's coming up is, is 3,500 views, mm -hmm. but then the next one is 11. Is 1,100 and then 2,000 and then 220,000. So it's not exactly correlated with views. This one with less views goes up higher than this one. And Eater is a big company in the world of restaurants. Fuzzy's Kitchen is a, a husband and wife in their living room. And their video got higher than Eater. So there is some sort of algorithm that is not fully revealed to the public. But the point is create video on a regular basis about concepts and topics people want to watch and YouTube will use their magic to help your video get found as well as ways that we'll talk about next time for SEO. Question. Yes. 
could you theoretically um, just keep viewing your own video to get that number up, or are they tracing IP numbers? or? Yeah, you could watch your own video several times to get that number up. There's not too much of a value to that because then they would see that it's the same IP, it's the same yeah, location that's over wondering. and over. They check an IP addresses. Yeah, so just getting that number up is not that valuable because how many, you know, how helpful will that be? I'm the only one watching the video. I want other people to watch it. So we're going to create the video and then we're also going to share it on Twitter and Facebook. People forget about that, cross-pollination. I created a YouTube video. I'm also going to share it on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and whatever. I'm also going to share what I've got on Twitter. I'm going to share that on Facebook. I'm going to cross-pollinate it. That's how you build the traffic. And we'll talk about more techniques, how to get, how to get views. Uh, but some of the things we talked about in previous days also apply here with some tweaks. Last one. Advertisement. So this is what, like the classic commercial that you might find on TV. This is one that we did for a, a local restaurant. So we did that for a local business, um, a commercial on YouTube, about 37 seconds long. Uh, so this one was shot with, uh, with a Canon camera on a tripod here and there, handheld here and there, different clips put together. This one, uh, we did this one a while ago, 2013. So on that one I used iMovie, but the same sort of concepts that we'll talk about for Movie Maker work on iMovie and vice versa. The point is, you know, we could have easily, obviously, recorded the chef, you know, standing here way too far away, recording the chef, and he's putting it all together and put it up there, and maybe it would have worked, maybe not. But here it's got that work and that effort about, let's get this shot, then let's put this shot, then this angle, and cut this, and put the music, and it's blurry here, and all of that. And then at the end, you've got this um, still photo that you zoom out of, and over here, the you know the camera moves like this, and, and whatever. And then at the end, a link back to the restaurant. There's the description. In the description, we can also put links. So a link to the restaurant. You're hungry now? Go to the restaurant and book a table. Uh, and uh, you know this this gets you this gets you more customers perhaps. And you have your logo on the logo for the restaurant also is there. On this one, yes. Yeah, you can put your logo on the channel. You can also put the logo on your video. This one doesn't have it because it's it's a little older. But they added the ability. YouTube added the ability to put your logo on your video also. Like a watermark. A watermark, exactly. Because every YouTube video by default has the ability to share it. So what if someone? comes to this YouTube channel and then they share it off to their Google Plus or they share it off to their Facebook. My video is going to show up on their Facebook. Sometimes people say, I don't want people to steal my stuff. Again, you have to think in terms about that's a good thing that people share your stuff on social media, especially if you've got that watermark. So they take my video, share it on their Facebook, but my video will still have my company watermark on it. And the good thing about that is that the watermark is an active link. If my video ends up on someone else's website, my logo is there, and if someone clicks that logo, it's going to take them back to my YouTube channel. So it brings people back to this channel. So we'll do one more, and then we'll talk about how do you do what this. What camera that you used on that one? That one was a Canon uh, Rebel T2i. It's a little old now. They're on the T6i now. Uh, but this is all totally subjective uh, you know the it's not the it's not the tool that makes the artist it's the artist that makes the artist so I can give suggestions about hardware and such but really it's, it's still a, a lot about us so I like to use the rebel the Canon rebel 
And right now they're on the T6, I think, maybe T7 already, but I still have my T2i, and it was probably like $700, interchangeable lenses and really good HD quality. Uh, and um, one of the lower price one, I believe it's the SLI. Uh, that one's about $300 and very, very good quality also. Now, I do favor Canon, although Nikon is on par and makes really good cameras as well. I, I'm not familiar with their whole lineup, but, you know, the Nikon... I don't know the names at all. My other... Uh, another person on the in the team was a Can... I was a Nikon person for a long time until she finally got a Canon. Uh, but any one of these will work. Sony cameras and Pentax, Olympics, they're all, they're all good. Olympus, they're all good. It's just that how much do you want to spend and does it have the features that I need? And basically good visuals and good audio, just like a good video. Show one more, then we'll take a quick break and then we'll actually do it together. This is another one in that same style. These two here are in that style of like a commercial and these over here are a little bit more like cinema verite in that let's just record what's going on. And look at that. The ones that we spent the most time on and effort have less views than the one we kind of just shot without that much effort. 1,500 views. So you don't know what's going to be a hit. You're going to think, so much effort, this is going to be amazing, people are going to love it, and it doesn't do that well. And then one that's not a lot of effort, that's the one that does well. You never know. Yes? How did you do the audio on the recording? Is that part of the music that's playing, we'll, we add that we add that at the moment that we edit the video. So we'll, we'll do that. Just like I gave in the folder here, I'm, I, I've given you guys a video and a sound, and we're going to combine them. same sort of style in that it's close up, it's handheld, it's preparing the food, it's got that little um, pan effect where the camera pans into view, then it's got the zoom effect, we can do all of that, then it's got the company at the end, and um, so it's kind of yellow on this projector, but it is a little bit better if you see it on a real, real screen. Uh, and then the sound in the background, and it just a lot of clips put together. We probably spent about two hours at most in the restaurant shooting a bunch of clips, uh, and then it took even longer to edit them together. That's always the problem with video production, that it's usually going to take you much longer to edit the video. So you have the two phases. Production. Is the moment you're recording. And we've got post production, the moment you're editing. And uh, in the in the big Hollywood movies, uh, it's always the post production that really takes longer to set up the recording and the actors and all of that and actually recording it that usually is relatively short then it takes this time to edit it together to get the perfect expression edited with this and the music to synchronize and all of that so all of these that, that I've shown you especially for my company that I know that I've worked on always the longest amount of time is the post-production you can record pretty quickly get that done but then cut out this mistake and fix the audio here and put this uh, still shot. Post-production always takes longer. Like with Star Wars, traditionally they would record like for nine months or something all over the world and then they would edit it for three years to get all of those effects and the acting and everything all together and then it's released. So that still applies for us with a 40 second long video. It's 40 seconds final final result. It was in total a bunch of you know a whole day of recording different things 
for about two hours, and then another like at least two hours to just edit it together, down to 40 seconds. So that could take a while. And then I believe you can uh, to how should we say it to um, styles of video creation and of course this is going to depend on what kind of videos you're creating but I'm gonna say pre-planned no planned the pre-planned is that you know everyone discusses we're going to shoot a video at the restaurant, so I want to get this kind of shot. I want the actor to do this. You can get so complex to do even storyboards, which is drawing the idea of what you're going to do in the video. Alfred Hitchcock, I believe, was very famous in that he would have the whole movie drawn before he even shot the movie. And he would tell a cinematographer, here's what I want. Use your camera to capture that. That's the pre-planned style. You you have an idea of what you're going to do before you do it. That sounds obvious. Yeah, storyboarding. So, no plan is the opposite. You just, you know, start to record something and see what happens afterward in post-production. I've worked with both, and I sort of tend to accidentally do the no plan more. Like, the, like these two videos for this restaurant, we didn't have any idea. We were going to show up, chefs cook something, we didn't know what they were going to record, we didn't have any plan for anything. I, I stood with my camera in one spot, my partner with another one. She uh, shot her clips, I shot my clips, and then I brought them all together into Movie Maker. What can I do with these? And then I put together this. So honestly, I didn't have any plan, and then I saw it come together by looking at the video. Not a lot of people can work like that. It might be too overwhelming, too many, you know, too much to figure out. So I'm going to suggest, as a beginner, think about the pre-planned method write down some notes. I want this video to show this, this, and this. Even that's a plan to work with. You don't have to get complex with a storyboard, um, but have an idea of what you're going to do before you do it. And maybe do it more than once. Maybe the plan is, I'm going to record you know, the president of the company talking about our values. And I'm going to write some notes here. I want him to say this, and I want him to say that. And then we record it, and it looked okay. Let's do it one more time. I recorded it twice, same answers, but he get it, did it slightly different two times, I could edit those together and make a great video out of two separate clips. So the, the no planned version, be careful about that one, because that could be very frustrating. Like, I've got all of this video, what am I going to do with it? Unless you have the time and the effort and the creativity to do something with it. And lastly here, you can look at those on your own. Uh, you can go look at some uh, top tips for creating professional videos. You can look at that. You've also got the Vimeo Video School. Vimeo is the biggest competitor to YouTube, but YouTube is so big. How many of you have heard of Vimeo before today? Oh, more than I would think, actually. So I guess they're doing well. Uh, but they're the biggest uh, competitor to YouTube. You can also upload your videos to, to Vimeo. Um, but they've got a video school where you can go here and get these various lessons, how to shoot video, good advice, all of that. Is, is Vimeo a higher quality? Like they have a bigger server to store stuff? No, the, the big difference, the differentiator between Vimeo and YouTube is, in the nicest way to say it, they're more snobs. Okay. On, on YouTube, anyone can upload any weird, crazy, shaky video and they're accepted. On Vimeo, it's a little more snobby that if you're going to put videos on Vimeo, you should make them a little bit more pro. And they also have a paid version. YouTube's got a paid version now, but no one cares. Uh, on Vimeo, you, you really need to pay to get the best results, and there's no ads that are splattered all over your videos, and it's a little bit more of a community of professionals and such. Uh, so if you're going to use Vimeo, it's valuable, but do read up on it and see the style and character of Vimeo videos. Do they vet videos? Uh, that I'm not exactly sure. All of the content that I've uploaded, I've never had it rejected. Uh, but it is more about uh, the style and quality of your videos. Yes? Originally, YouTube had a limit on how long the videos could be. And that's where Vimeo got a big hold because they put more limits and all the length of the yeah, a few years ago, the maximum, I think it was 10 minutes, maybe 15, you couldn't upload a, a video longer than 15 minutes. 
and then they uh, deactivated that feature. Uh, but uh, you still see a lot of ads on YouTube, and now YouTube is trying something called YouTube Red, which I believe for $9 a month you get no ads on YouTube. So for a lot of people, that's like throwing away $9 a month. And for other people, that's amazing. I watch YouTube all day long, I don't want ads. I'll pay $9. And Vimeo doesn't have these ads on your on your videos. So there's, for all intents and purposes, no limit to the length of your YouTube video. And I know because I've uploaded a three-hour video, uh, and I've seen videos that are 24 hours long. Uh, you know, who watches these things? No one watches it nonstop, probably, but they jump around. There's videos here about white noise. You know, there's the sound of rain with 24-hour long videos. So you can have, you know, a nice soothing rain sound if you're not if you're not in a rainy location um, let's take our first break when we come back we're we're gonna do this we're gonna create a video I'll show you the software uh, and uh, we'll have something to upload to YouTube so it's 1032 we'll be back at 1042 and we'll get started